Hello, and welcome to using the ArcGIS JavaScript API in a hybrid geospatial architecture. My name is Bradley Andrick, and I'm the lead software engineer at Theorem Geo Inc. A little bit more about Theorem Geo. We are a advanced spatial technology solutions company. We work with the utility and gas industry and have been for more than a decade on um, everything from spatial video management to forestry, transmission and distribution and maintenance projects and meteorology. And we also build custom applications to suit different needs within those domains. So for this presentation, I'd like to start with a scenario. So let's say that we have a client and they want a custom web application. And that's great because we know how to build applications. Um, and specifically, they want a spatial uh, web application. Uh, so the first thing that we turn towards is uh, things that we know, ArcGIS Enterprise, either ArcGIS Server or Portal, something in that realm to get the data. And then we will simply bring it into the ArcGIS JavaScript API, build their custom web app around that um, and complete the project. However, in this scenario, our client, for whatever reason, uh, does not want to use or does not have the ability to use ArcGIS Enterprise. So they don't have an ArcGIS server or a portal that they're able to use. And instead, they have either a traditional geo database or the data stored somewhere else. And so that's kind of the heart of the problem here, but not to worry. Uh, that's what we can use actually is the ArcGIS JavaScript API to connect back to that relational database management system or whatever database you might have. And the way that we're gonna do that in this presentation is through the GeoJSON layer class. So a little bit about GeoJSON layer. Let's start by breaking down and talking about what is GeoJSON. So specifically, JSON, Job, JavaScript Object Notation, um, once added with geographic data, turns into GeoJSON, which is really just a format for encoding geographic data structures. So what exactly does this look like? So here's a sample of a feature represented as GeoJSON. To break down the parts a little bit, um, in the beginning, this is specifying that this is of type feature. Next, we define a geometry for this feature, and this is of type point, and you see the coordinates for the point there. And then finally, we have properties, and this is really just the attributes of our data. So a name in this instance, but this could really be uh, anything that would, you'd have in your attributes, IDs, um, and so on. So that represents a single feature. But if you want to group these features, all you have to do is wrap those uh, inside of a feature collection, which is just that, a grouping of features. So now we know what a GeoJSON object looks like. And how do we use it? We simply set it as a variable, and then that can be accessed in our JavaScript code. So that's pretty great. So now we understand what GeoJSON is. I'd like to talk a little bit about accessing that GeoJSON. There are a couple of different ways, but I'll kind of highlight two. And the first is to get that GeoJSON from a file. So maybe it's something that's static, that doesn't change that often, or something that you're relying on a customer to provide, and they push that out to the web just via a file. So that's one way. And the other way is to build that data structure on demand. So the difference between these two is that the first uh, is just accessing directly that GeoJSON file that's been saved and put somewhere and is accessible over the web. The second way, we're actually going down to the database with an API layer, making a query and returning that and formatting it as a GeoJSON object. All right, so now we know what GeoJSON is and how to access it. The next step is how do we use that in 
the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. And it's pretty simple, actually. It's just using the GeoJSON layer class, which can be found in the Esri G JavaScript API documentation under Esri layers and GeoJSON layer class. So here's a little bit of sample code um, pulled directly from the documentation of the ArcGIS JavaScript API. And it's really straightforward. Um, first, we're just setting up our variables. Uh, the top is just setting a fi file URL. So maybe you do have a static file and you can just set that as a, as a variable. And then the second API URL there as a variable is showing, you know, maybe we actually wanna hit that API endpoint uh, directly that's doing the query and returning the results formatted as GeoJSON. And then below that, we just simply construct the layer. So we set up a new constructor for a new GeoJSON layer, and we pass in that URL as a parameter. And this can be that file URL or at the API URL directly. And it'll go ahead and fetch that and bring it in as our data. And you can have other properties in here, just like any other layer constructor, titles, renderers, things along those lines. And then finally, we just add it to the map, um, like we're used to doing with all of our other layers. And it's really that simple to add GeoJSON into the data or into a map. All right, so now I'd like to do a short demonstration. And here we're actually gonna utilize uh, a real world scenario when we're talking about a client. And in order to show this, I'm gonna first uh, show a Postgres, PostGIS database that a client wants that they don't want a geodatabase um, created, no enterprise geodatabase, and no ArcGIS server connected to any of this. So this is really just a database storing points as geometry data types. Next, we'll talk about setting up an API layer um, that simply queries that SQL directly, makes a connection to the database and queries, and then formats that as GeoJSON and returns the response uh, from where the request came from in our application. And then finally, we'll set up the ArcGIS JavaScript ABI to call the API endpoint and actually render that data on the map. So moving along, we'll go ahead and start with our database. So this is a sample database that I've set up inside of PostGIS, Postgres. Um, there's lots of resources that go through that, but usually in this instance, we're talking about a client that would have set this up already. There's just one layer in this data set that's a generic data set um, from oil and gas wells in the US or North America. Um, and here is a sample of a select statement that actually go, goes ahead and formats our query as GeoJSON. So here's the actual query that we're running to return our rows of data. So in this instance, we're selecting everything from our oil and gas wells uh, table, and we're just limiting the results to 50. And then everything around that is actually formatting and building that GeoJSON object that we talked about. It's important to note, we are not including the geometry here um, as that one actually doesn't really translate that well into GeoJSON. We don't really need that. Um, so that is the object that we're building here. Important to note, we are doing uh, converting that geometry beforehand to our geometry inside of the feature object uh, with ST as GeoJSON inside of Postgres, PostGIS. All right, so now that we've looked at the database layer, let's really quick look at a very simple API. So to use this, we've used Node and Express to set up a very small API. Um, and we've brought in Express and we've brought in PG to be able to interact with Postgres. So the first thing we do is set up our Express API just like normal. And then in this one little simple page here, 
And again, in production, this would be much larger of an API, but for demonstration purposes, we have two routes set up here. One that just queries, makes a connection to the database and queries for the top 50 objects. And then the same exact thing that queries for 50,000 records. And I'll show the first one here. And essentially we're just setting an empty array here of our IDs. We're making our connection to our sample database that we've set up. And then here, this should look familiar. This is actually the exact same SQL statement that we were testing in our database. And I'll go ahead and run that here in our database. And we see that it actually does in fact format our GeoJSON. Now coming back over to our application code, all that this does when we actually execute this query is send a response back to the client representing the object that we're querying for. And then the 50,000 is the exact same thing, but we're updating our limit instead of 50 to be 50,000. And then we simply go ahead and start the API. And I've already run npm run start for this sample API, so that is running. So now if we go to our browser, we can go ahead and see that we actually have our local API running. And if I reload that page, you'll see that it's actually returning to the browser our JSON object, specifically a GeoJSON object. We have our feature collection with all of our features. There should be 50 in here with all the data that we're looking for. Now, if you notice, this was actually pretty quick to return 50. And I'll show you 50,000, which takes a little bit longer to render here. Ooh, let's see if I can get it to work there. There we go. And a query of that size took a little bit longer, but it is actually loading up in our browser all 50,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that and go back to 50 and make sure that loads in there. Great. So now we've looked at our database, we've set up our API, and then we've tested it to make sure that it's returning GeoJSON correctly. And it is. So now we're gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna show the most simple way to use this is actually start with the sample code from the ArcGIS JavaScript API. So if you go to the GeoJSON layer class inside of here, there's already some sample code that shows some earthquakes across the world. We're gonna open that up in the sandbox and tweak that code just a little bit to bring in our layer. So once this loads in our sandbox, what we're gonna do is simply swap out our URL to point to our local API. And then we won't need a template or a renderer for what we're doing. And then let's also remove our pop-up template and our renderer from our GeoJSON layer constructor. And we'll just call this demo data. And I'm gonna change one more thing just to start our extent on the center of the map. So simple as that, we brought in our URL pointing to our API. We set that inside of our GeoJSON layer. And then our GeoJSON layer is getting added to the map and we're gonna center the map. We'll go ahead and hit refresh. And now we see our map has loaded and it's actually gone ahead and run that query. And we see 50 dots on our map for the top 50 oil wells. And it was as simple as that to query GeoJSON and plot it on a map. Go ahead and refresh that one more time to show you that it's still up and working and running. It made that query and it plotted it on the map. And we can actually go ahead and change that to be our other endpoint that has 50,000, just to show you how good the rendering actually can be with the GeoJSON layer. We'll go ahead and hit refresh one more time. This one will take a little bit longer to load, um, but all things considered, it's actually pretty quick still for the amount of data that we're rendering. And additionally, you just wanna be a little careful there. Of course, you don't wanna render several million points on your map. Uh, 
that will take a very long time to load. Um, and you also want to consider, you know, your client memory and things like that. But you can zoom in and once that initial load takes place, it actually renders very, very well inside of the ArcGIS JavaScript API. So you can see the density that we're working with here is pretty extreme. And that was pretty quick to load all of that onto a map. We'll hit refresh one more time just to show that load time again. Okay, it's loaded. Now it's going to start to render here. There we go. Looks like this time we're actually querying a lot more data up this way as well. And there we go. So that's all there is to using the GeoJSON layer class inside of the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Thank you for joining this presentation and I hope you have a good rest of your day.